I think we can all agree that 2020 has been a year filled with a lot of frustration, a lot of frustration turned to anger, and it really reminds me of Matthew 24, 12 that sheds some light on this, where it says, because of the lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. So I see many falling into this cage of rage, and I have to ask myself, is it right? It might feel justified, but where does it leave you? Is it actually productive? What does your anger cost you? So I want to share a video that I've shared with my classes in previous years because it really deals with this idea of anger and how to deal with it. Keep in mind that it's set in 1968 during the height of the civil rights movement. So uh, let's go ahead and watch. Is Jeff special, Edward? Now, yeah, Miguel, you know if I could, I would. Bullet, man. I see you serving the brothers the good stuff. White folks, too. You don't see them eating this dog food. So I think that we can agree that there's a time for anger and that your anger might be justified. But where has that led you? Has that led you to hate? Has it led you to isolate yourself, to push others away? Has it led you to hopelessness and nihilism? Or is Lord, it today, do we have to do this every day, Miguel? Every day you keep putting the brown man down, Edward. Oh, oh, oh. Keeping the brown man down. I'm putting the brown man down. That's right. Let's keep the brown man down. Let's send the brown man back across the border to his sweet Sunny readers and his refried beans. Oh, first of all, we didn't cross the border. The border crossed us. Yeah. And our Sunny readers are better than your fried chicken eating mama with the big backyard. <laughs> so I believe the first way to deal with anger is to learn humility. Realize that this life isn't about you. It's pride that leads to hate and births anxiety and depression. But when your eyes are off of yourself and on Christ, you will learn that trusting is better than trying, and God will give you the strength to turn anger into love. Hey, you smell that? Look at that. My very own special berry cobbler. Mm. Fresh mm. out of the oven. But since you had to put my mama in it, excuse me. There you go, Jose. Enjoy it. Oh. Now, why is it that our pride makes us angry so often? I know that, for example, I used to get really angry and frustrated on the freeway. When people would cut me off, I'd get so... Uh, I would take it so personal because my pride felt assaulted and like I had to fight people and that I had to get even and that I had to prove to people that they had wronged me. I feel like oftentimes it's just our ego that we're trying to protect and that that is what we're conflicting about. And then I started to realize that um, people just are trying to get a certain place and that it's not all about me. It's not about my pride. It's not about protecting myself, but it's about having harmony and humility on the freeway and putting others first. And that really helped me to not get so angry on the freeway. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> you Mexican boys can't play the dozens. I don't know why you keep on, Miguel. Mm, wow, man. And what do you know about the dozen? I know that I got some cobbler and you don't. <laughs> You're a sellout, man. No. Hey. It's good, ain't it, Jose? Mm -hmm. yeah, that recipe was handed down by my great-grandmother. Mmm. Hey, let me have some of that. Come on, brother. We ain't brothers, amigo. <laughs> and we ain't amigos, brother. <laughs> Great. The next way to deal with anger is to learn forgiveness. Now, you may say, they deserve my anger. I can't forgive. Why should I? Great question. But did you know that you've been forgiven so much more? Your sins have angered God, yet he has forgiven you so much more with the sacrifice of his son. Colossians 3.13 says, Bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. So this really shows that the one who is unforgiving doesn't understand how much he's been forgiven by God. You, um, you working mm. the double shift like the rest of us? I most certainly am not. You must be the only one. Yeah, you know why? Why? Too good looking for that mess. <laughs> you ain't working the double because Whitey's afraid. Now, some of the anger that feels the most justified is when somebody personal to you has hurt you really bad. Oftentimes, it's not the strangers that hurt us because we could care less about what they think or how they treat us, but it's really those closest to us that really get us angry or really hurt us. And so learning forgiveness, but don't make it about them being worth forgiving. Just realize that you've been forgiven so much by the Lord. Let that fuel you. 
that you've been forgiven so you can forgive others. They're afraid you're gonna go out Huey Newton on them, all violent. See, they ain't afraid of us yet, Jose. Not yet, man, but one day, one day they will be, man. We're gonna get the respect that we deserve. We're gonna take back California, take back our land, man. I want you to park that anger in my kitchen, young man. I want you to get your hand off my shoulder, Negro. I think it's also worth noting that if you want to heal from your hatred, you need people in your life to check your anger, and you also need the personal ability to listen to instruction. Let's keep watching. All right, keep it up. See, the first few times I tried to make this dessert, couldn't get it right. Too much sugar one time, not enough sugar the next time, couldn't find the balance. I realized I was forcing it, you know, trying to make it taste like my mama's or her mama's. Mine didn't have any poetry, didn't have any light. And then I realized I was trying to force it to taste like my mother's, taste like her mother's. See, it had to be Edward's creation. Mm -hmm. It had to come from me. Now you, Miguel, you've got no poetry, you've got no light. You've got no one looking at you and saying, look at that Miguel. I want some of what he's got. All you got is your anger. I ain't angry. I'm sorry I didn't hear you. I'm gonna speak you up. said I'm not angry! He used to agree that poetry is how you keep from anger and hate. I used to say, be better, not bitter. But in reality, I don't think that works. You will always find a reason why your hate is justified if you are trying and relying on your own poetic self. Instead, I think the final and best way to deal with anger is to learn identity. Identify with Christ. Know he was more rejected and left by his close friends. Cast down more than you will ever be. Learn your identity. 1 Peter 2.21 says, For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. All right. <laughs> now, I used to be just like you. I had anger. And then after Dr. King was killed, I don't know. Anger like you can't even imagine. I think that one of the great ways to help others heal from hate and anger is to identify with them and to share one-on-one -on -one experiences of how you also have struggled with hate and anger in the past. And I think that that's uh, the approach that Christ took as well. If you read the Gospel of John, Christ is constantly one-on-one -on -one identifying with other people and showing them the truth and the grace. Also, as I've always said, if you want to win an argument, comment on somebody's uh, posts. But if you want to win a friend, send a private message and reach out personally. White folks ain't trying to keep you down, Miguel. White folks just don't like to be pushed into a corner. They'll come around. You just got to make it look like it was their idea, like they're the ones that thought of it. They need to feel like they're the great emancipators. Like it was theirs to give in the first place. Let them have it. If that's all it takes, let them have it. Can you dig it? Now, I'm not sure merely being passive and allowing time to heal things really works, but if you practice humility, learn forgiveness, and identify with Christ, you will be able to have more peace in a traffic jam or when someone cuts you off or heal from a personal wound somebody has inflicted on you. I know my man Jose can dig it, can't you? Hmm? Edward! All right. Is that your famous combo I'm smelling down in my office? Yes, sir, Mr. Timmons. I just pulled a fresh batch out of the oven. I'll make sure some gets to your office directly, sir. I'll get some sent to your office directly, sir. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I'm not working a double shift today, though, am I? Amigo. I would caution you to see forgiveness as a power play, but that is what a lot of people use it as. One philosopher said that resentment is like drinking poison and then waiting for the other person to die. And though there is some truth to that, I believe it has some faults. If you only forgive people so that they don't have control over you, you will never know true peace that comes from 
true humility. So I hope that look at anger was helpful and I hope that you're able to personalize this, that you're able to humble yourself before God and allow Him to lift you up. I hope that you're also able to learn forgiveness, that you've been forgiven so much more than other people deserve your forgiveness, and that also to learn identity, that Christ has suffered so much more than you have, and that you can identify with Him in your suffering. And through those three, we can learn to trust God and to move forward past our hate and learn to heal.